Good morning. morning. And welcome to Trinity Reform, United Church of Christ, where no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. I want to thank you for joining us here in person as well as online and hope that you're truly fed by the worship of our God this day. On the table at the rear of the sanctuary is a giving tree. The hospitality team has chosen a family to support this Christmas by supplying gifts for the children and necessities for their house. Gift tags with sizes and descriptions of the items needed are hung on the tree. Take one that you would like to donate and then place the item unwrapped with the tag under the tree. The gifts will be wrapped and given to the family prior to Christmas. Today is the second Sunday of the month, so we will Uh, have fellowship time immediately following uh, worship in Jubilee Hall, and it's sponsored by the hospitality team. Next week, we'll have both adult and children's Sunday school. Remember this Saturday, this Saturday, December 17th, we'll be having our traditional cookie walk. So remember to get out and support your church by coming to the cookie walk on Saturday. Anyone who can help with this event should contact Jane Coons or Don Hummel, especially for baking of raisin fields. So we appreciate your help. Cliff Helwood, Helwig would like everyone to please stop by Jubilee Hall before you're leaving if you're not staying for uh, fellowship hour, as he has a gift for every family. Grocery cards will also be sold over in Jubilee Hall uh, after service, and you can, and if you, if and those online, you can simply call the church, and we will, uh, and let us know what if you want wise or giant cards, and we can either have them delivered or ready for you to pick up. This is this is a really vital fundraiser for the church. It's one that not only helps us to remain open, replenish our reserves, which we keep dipping into every once in a while, and helping our community with missions. So this is a vital fundraiser that we all hope that you will you will support. And finally, as we prepare for worship, I want you to let us empty our minds of anything that would distract you from realizing the presence of God's Holy Spirit during this time of worship. So let us now experience God's worship as we join together in the lighting of the Advent candle. We light the third candle of the Advent. Bring us to your light. The light will come into our world and enlighten everyone. God sent John the baptizer to prepare the people for the coming of Jesus Christ, the true light of the world. John called for people to repent of their sins and to live faithfully. He baptized with the cleansing water and proclaimed the new life that Christ the one who would follow him, would bring. This Advent, we ask for God's blessing. Merciful God, we give thanks that you send messengers like John to call us to greater faith. We ask that in these days we prepare for you in prayer and ask of holy compassion. Forgive us and lead us to your light. Amen. Please join me in the call to worship found on the walls and on your screens. Come away from haste and frantic busyness. This is the season for quiet waiting. It is hard to still our souls when we are so busy. It is hard to be patient with ourselves or others. Receive God's mercy and strengthen your hearts. A savior is coming. God's love is near. We want to hear and believe God's promises. We want to become patient, loving seekers. God presented us with a high and holy way. Come before God now with praise and singing. It's the joy God offers us. Our spirits rejoice in the work, our Savior. Join us in the opening hymn, Lift Up Your Heads, O Mighty Gates. 
Number 129 in the hymnals or on the wall? Please join me in the opening prayer found on the walls and on your screens. Mighty one, we rejoice that you strengthen our weak hands and make firm our feeble knees. You open our eyes and unstop our ears. You meet our hungers with good things. You disturb our false pride while helping us discover our true strength. You topple us from our pretensions while lifting up the lowly to claim the inner power you alone can provide. We have assembled to worship you. Awaken the gladness that comes when we recognize your presence. We long to know you in this hour. Amen. Please be seated. To all whose lives seem like a desert wasteland, God invites you to come to the living waters. To all who feel they are wrestling with lions, God offers a refuge. The judge who is standing before us awaits our confession with compassion and the promise of healing. So let us confess our sins by reciting the prayer of confession found on the walls and on your screens. Come into our emptiness, gracious God. We feel empty because we have shut you out of our lives. Break through our pretensions, Holy One. We pretend to be powerful because you have not claimed the peace that is available deep within when you dwell with us. Quiet our grumbling and complaining. We are impatient because we have focused on things, not on you. Enter our lives with the forgiveness you have promised to all who are truly sorry for their unfaithfulness. Release us from our self-created prisons. Amen. <clears throat> Let us now confess our personal sins in silence. Lord, hear our prayers. God speaks to our fearful hearts. Be strong. Do not fear. I will come to save you. Sorrow and sighing flee away. Joy and gladness are yours. The blind receive their sight. The lame walk. 
the lepers are cleaned, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have good news brought to them. Praise God. Please be seated. And children or young adults, you want to come on up? All right. Well, good morning. How are y'all doing? Heard you had an exciting night last night, right? Yeah, we're going to talk about that at Joys and Concerns. All right, got a question for you. My pad here will work. Who here knows what an ace wrap is? You know what an ace wrap is? What, what, Andre? It's a bandage, that's right. So it's a stretchy bandage. And it's, it's an elastic bandage. And you can put it on different joints of your body to help them heal if you've injured them. Wrapping an injured knee, well, that'll help give it support so you won't get it injured even more. And in our scripture lesson today, you'll hear how the Israelites were feeling pretty beat up and injured. They had been taken to a foreign land against their will and told they would only be able to return, they, that they wouldn't be able to return for a long, long time. So God sent them to the prophet Isaiah. God sent them the prophet Isaiah, and God said to Isaiah, strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are or are, are of a fearful heart, be strong, do not fear. And the people then had hope because God saw their pain and healed it. So what did God do to help us today when we are in pain from, and need healing? What does God do for us? Right, he helps us to get, to get help for ourselves, right? To go to the hospital or, or to make sure that we stay down and we do what's right and help, you know, to not spread germs. Like some people who have just gotten over colds wear masks and, and they, we do things to help Jesus heal us. And Jesus reminds us to do those things to keep everybody safe and uninjured. Maybe even kind of reminds you not to throw the ball in the house or run in the house where there's all kinds of toys where you could trip and fall and hurt yourself, right? All right. Exactly. Well, God sent a particular person into this world to do healing work. God's greatest healer was Jesus, whose birth we will celebrate in 14 days, just two weeks away. Jesus came to the sight, gave, gave, <laughs> Jesus came to give sight to the blind, hearing to the deaf, and healing to the lame. And Jesus still does that work today through our prayers as he helps those who need healing and strength. And that's my challenge for you. I want you to pray for people mentioned in our joys and concerns so that your prayers will tell Jesus who needs his healing and strength. I also want you to pray for your friends, your family, and your church so that any healing they may need can come out of your prayers. So do you think you can do that? I bet you can. Let's pray. Healing God, hear our prayers as we ask Jesus to give strength and healing to those who need it. Let our prayers be an instrument of your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right.
God of peace and compassion, show us how to love and help others, just as you love and help us each day. Our lesson for this morning is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 35, verses 1 through 10. Looking to a, few, a future eschatological hope in a time of contemporary trouble, Isaiah describes the transformation of the land of Zion and its inhabitants after the Lord defeats Zion's enemies. 
beginning in verse 10. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom like the crocus. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, the majesty of Carmel and Sharon. They share. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, be strong, do not fear. Here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer and the tongue of the speechless joy sing for joy. For water shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool and the thirsty ground springs of water. The haunt of jackals shall become a swamp. The grass shall become reeds and rushes. A highway shall be there and it shall be called the holy way. The unclean shall not travel on it, but it shall be for God's people. No traveler, not even fools, shall go astray. No lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast come upon it. They shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there, and the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Here ends our first reading. <clears throat> our gospel lesson is from the book of Matthew, chapter 11, verses 2 through 11. Answering John's questions from prison about whether Jesus is the Messiah, Jesus states the evidence and invites John to decide for himself, even as Jesus evaluates John's legacy, beginning in verse 2. When John heard in prison what the Messiah was doing, he sent word by his disciples and said to him, Are you the one who is to come, or are we to wait for another? Jesus answered them, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have good news brought to them. And blessed is anyone who takes no offense at me. As they went away, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out to, into the wilderness to look at? A reed shaken by the wind? What then did you go out to see? Someone dressed in soft robes? Look, those who wear soft robes are in royal palaces. What then did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written, see, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way before you. Truly, I tell you, among those born of women, no one has arisen greater than John the Baptist. Yet the kingdom, yet, yet the king, the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Blessed are those who hear the word of our God and believe. <laughs> Excuse me. Let us pray. God of infinite possibilities, open our eyes and our minds to see the opportunities that lay before us. Help us to have the courage to join you where you are working as we strive to be the church. Bless us to do your will as we pray that the meditations of our hearts and the words of my mouth might be pleasing and acceptable to you this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In our Old Testament lesson, Israel is in exile because, there were, because they believe that due to their unrighteous actions, their relationship with God is broken. And yet, because of God's grace and forgiveness, God promises a better future for Israel. And it's because of God's grace and mercy that humanity gets a second chance, a third chance, a fourth, a fifth, and so on. 
And isn't that what we depend on too? Not only in our personal lives, but especially in our church lives. We know that we don't always live up to God's will for our lives. And the same goes for the body of Christ, the church. The church certainly hasn't lived up to God's will. If we did, there wouldn't be hundreds of different denominations in the world. God's will is that we all may be one, but we can't seem to stay in relationship with each other long enough to do that. So we not only split up our our religions, but we fight, we criticize, and we judge one another as churches, let alone as individuals. And yet, for all the differences and all the conflict, God continues to bless the church. We remained open during the pandemic when we thought for sure it would be the death of Trinity. We now have live streaming, something we wanted to do, but never had the money to do it, but we were forced into doing live streaming, and it's worked wonderful. We put together a mission and vision committee when things got tough, and we needed to find new ways of being the church. Again, it is because of God's grace, God's mercy, and God's forgiveness. It's not just because of what we do or what we believe or how righteous we are. God's grace keeps our doors open. God's grace allows us to be the church, a forgiven and forgiving people. God's grace allows us to have the resources to help God's people. So let's look at what God has led us to do here at Trinity. We continue to worship, but we do it as a team. We do it together. We have liturgists, acolytes, greeters, ushers, a choir, altar preparers, communion preparers. Together, we are a worship team, and we find new ways of worshiping. And today is going to be one of those days. You'll see in a little bit. We are a mission church as well, reaching out to our community inside and outside the church. We help and support the food bank, Panther Packs, Susquehanna Area Mission Council missions, ministerium missions, benevolence for community and church organizations, the book house by the bell, helping those in recovery, Crock-Pot Cooking, Trunk or Treat, a visitation team, caroling to the shut-ins, and the list goes on and on and on. And on top of all of that, we are an open and affirming congregation, welcoming all who seek Christ and have the rights and privileges of membership, no matter where that you are on your journey. Because of the grace of God, we do so much here at our church for our members, for our friends, and especially for our community. We look to see where God is working so that we can join in. We strive to do God's will as the body of Christ, working together in relationship with our God and with each other. So where else do we need to go? What else do we need to do? Think about those two questions. Where else do we need to go, and what else do we need to do? Start thinking. How can we continue to do God's will in our town as well as in our church? These are the questions that you need to answer as the body of Christ. You have, we have the opportunity to set the directions of this body of Christ and what it takes and which, where, what, t- what direction it takes, and decide how we might be a blessing to others. So we're going to take some time right here and now to talk openly about where we've come over the last six years. Let, let, and I say six years because that's how long I've been here, since 16 to now. So let's openly say where we think or where we feel we still need to go. Because as the sermon title says, We have infinite possibilities due to the grace, forgiveness, and mercy of our God. Now, (laughs) 
Like I said, this is a different type of sermon. You had two questions you had to think about. So we're going to talk right now, right here and now. We're going to openly talk about where we need to go. Where do we need to go? What do we need to do in this body of Christ? Because the church, the church, or the Ecclesia, I can't pronounce it, is a gathering, a gathering of people. That is what the church means. So we gather together to do nothing but worship. Is that, do we do nothing but worship, or do we do something else? Are we truly a mission church? Obviously, the list I read off is quite a bit of things we do. But what do we still need to do? What do we still need to do? Anyone? We don't need to go anywhere? We don't need to do anything? Okay. I knew she'd say something. I think that one thing that this church is always good is not just looking within these walls, but outside of the walls. So possibly when there's a community event, um, like a run uh, down when they do the New Year's uh, Eve or New Year's Day run, maybe supplying water at the finish line or um, doing something that we are able to do, which is is normally rather simple, but is something that means a lot to other people. Um, even if we're having a a social day down at the church or down at the uh, town park, maybe just providing the waters or hot coffee in, for people to have and, and just know that they are a blessing to us. Yeah. This summer, this past summer, we had pride in the park. The Columbia Montour uh, County Pride Organization got together and had pride in the park. I'm on the Human Relations Commission. I'm one of the Human Relations Commissioners. And we had a stand down there to let people know about the discrimination ordinance here in Bloomsburg and know that we are here and to help. But you know who I didn't see down there? I didn't see Trinity Reformed United Church of Christ, who is an open and affirming church down there. Unfortunately, by the time we realized it, we called and there was no openings to go down. But the question is, would we have had volunteers? Would we have had people to man the stand? down there. You see, we can't do this with only 25% of the people helping. Barry had a heck of a time getting up here for choir, but you know what? Nick and I made sure he did. Made sure he had a comfortable place that he could still be part of what we're doing here. You don't have to be able to lift 50 pounds or do all kinds of exercise, you know, physical work to help the church. There's a lot of things we do. Marjorie Cox, 90, 99 years old, calls so many people during the week and stays in touch with them just to make sure they're doing okay and that they have some, they have some uh, socialization. Yes. Oh, okay. We got a text. Kathy Seagraves from out in Wyoming. She's on our consistory. Doing many outreach projects is great, but creating more disciples is important too. So how are we creating disciples? We had discipleship class on Zoom during the pandemic, and we had about seven people who showed up almost every week. We've had discipleship classes here at the church before the pandemic. And again, we had about seven people. Coming to a discipleship class, making disciples, understanding what is God's will and what can we do is very, very important. But I know I have adult Sunday school, and I have very few people there. Rachel. You will probably not be surprised by my suggestion, but I, I think that we could be doing more outreach for children. So um, there's a lot of um, child-related activities that are happening in the community on a regular basis. And so even just having you know, one representative there volunteering or, you know, having um, something there. Because we do have, I mean, the the children's sermons are so beautiful. I feel like that's such a special part of what we have here. Um, obviously, we welcome children into the choir. Um, you know, we 
that is the future of our church. So, you know, anywhere where we can grow, um, I think that that would be time well spent. Absolutely. Yes, there are many outreach opportunities we have throughout this throughout the area. Last night, there was a recital right here in this sanctuary, a music recital was here in the sanctuary. You'll hear a little bit about it in Joyce Concerns. But yes, we have the opportunity to invite people in to use this beautiful space, to use Jubilee Hall, to do recitals and to do presentations. We have the opportunity to make disciples so that we can continue to do these type of outreach. Money doesn't always solve the issue. Just like all, the, all that canned food back there, all that canned food back on that back table, that all goes to the food cupboard. What a wonderful opportunity we have to be able to help those who truly need food in order to live. Greg? Uh, one important mission, kind of piggyback on what Rachel said, that I think Trinity should be involved in, uh, because I know um, Rachel's family is very passionate about it, is um, helping with uh, Cats and Bloom. Mm -hmm. It's a very vital mission here in the community with all the stray cats. And I think it would be excellent if Trinity could get involved, whether it be collecting food or blankets, whatever they need, and uh, have Trinity be a part of that mission. Because I know there are so many stray cats all over Bloomsburg and the surrounding communities, and it is a vital mission in the community. And think about it. Not only did Andre take his birthday money and give to Cass and Bloom, but you had Ivan collecting money for the pool. Our children, our true disciples, they really do what's necessary in our community. Rachel, you still do the, the cancer walk, and its name is free, free to Breathe, Free to Breathe. And she does this on her own. We have a wonderful opportunity. We have infinite possibilities. I agree. We should be involved in children's ministry more. We should be involved in discipleship classes. We should be involved in the community outreach. Is there, no one else has anything to say about where we could go or what we could do. Or where, do you think we're going the right direction? Show of hands. Who thinks Trinity Reform United Church Christ is going in the right direction? Okay. We're trying. We're trying, right. Not everybody raised their hands. Not everybody raised their hands. So what does that say? That says we need, when we have mission and vision committee meetings, we need to have your voice there. If we're going to go forward and we're going to remain open, yeah, we have the grocery cart account to dip into to keep us, make sure we pay the bills. That's wonderful. But are we doing God's will? Are we truly being the church? The church in the first century, you know what they did? I thought this was kind of cute. The apostles, they preached, but they got the Greek deacons to go feed the poor and take care of everybody. That was the church. The church took care of people. The church got out and helped feed the widows and the orphans, those who were the most vulnerable in that society. It was those who began the church, the apostles, the deacons. So are we going to continue forward or are we just going to stay stagnant? Because I can guarantee you, if we stay stagnant, we'll be selling the building shortly. And that's not a threat. I mean, that's an honest, honest to God what's going to happen. Only mission churches are right now thriving. Only mission churches are thriving. Those who do things for other people. I know there's a church in our community that has a huge parking lot filled with cars. And they quote, they have 1,500 members and more. But I also know that the people who go there are going there for entertainment. People who go there have told me directly, have said, we don't, don't really have a, yeah, the, you know, there's a spiritual aspect to it, but, you know, they have the gourmet coffee, they got the rock band, they got the, the themes, you know, Star Wars, Up, and whatever. 
Is that what you want? Do you want entertainment? I mean, I can learn to tap dance. But I don't think that's what you're coming here for. And I don't think all the people online are coming and watching us and, and ministry and watching our service for entertainment. So let us continue to be disciples. Let us continue to be the church. And let us continue to move forward with, with everyone, everyone participating in the process. Last chance. Okay. Okay. I will talk about one other thing before we move on. Missions are not just for, or fundraising is not just for missions. Yes, we use fundraising to keep our doors open as well. But mission allows us to do things that we don't normally do. And fundraising, I mean, helps us do things we don't normally do. Helps us get some of the maintenance taken care of that we haven't had in a while. We are now looking with the Vision and Mission Committee of making this church a community center. A community center. Letting nonprofit groups come in and use our meeting rooms downstairs, using Jubilee Hall, and yet, just like last night, using it for a recital. We also want to go start doing education classes. We have Crock-Pot Ministry, but we also want to start doing canning and baking and storage of food and so on and so forth, and nutritional type and educational type classes for that. We want to use our assets. We want to use our assets that we have. Beautiful sanctuary, beautiful Jubilee Hall, plenty of meeting rooms. We have a, an open building now or open room that the, now that the preschool is gone. That some want to, want to actually make it into a technology center for the community. A technology center here at Trinity for the community. Interesting. That's what our vision and mission committee does. It looks for ways to keep us a mission church. So let us rejoice and celebrate that we here at Trinity Reform, United Church of Christ, see the infinite possibilities that God gives to us to make a real difference in the world. And know, truly know that we are blessed by our God. Amen. Let us continue our service with our hymn of response. Be still my soul, number 566 in the hymnal, on the walls and on your screens.
be seated. <clears throat> Some of you may have seen me looking at my cell phone during the hymn. It's because of my cell phone's been going off with text messages from a lot of the people online who thought that was a wonderful sermon and a wonderful thing to do. So I hope that um, I'm glad that the online people saw that as uh, a good thing for us to really look at where do we need to go and what do we need to do. So thank you. This is, of course, the time of our service. I want to remind you to take notes of the people mentioned in our joys and concerns and join your list today with the one from last week and place it on your refrigerator, on your nightstand, or on your coffee table, anywhere that will remind you to, to share God's love with others through your prayers. This truly is a vital ministry here at Trinity and one that has had some amazing results. I'd like to start with Margie Cox, who has been busy baking cookies for our cookie walk. And of course, that means a lot of time on her feet. Margie is not here today because her hip is bothering her. So let us keep Margie Cox in prayer that she might find comfort, strength, and healing for a sore hip. Also, I'd like to uh, announce or uh, announce a joy. Like I said last night, there was a recital here. Harmony Arts Foundation had a recital here, and all three of the Troy Chalk boys played the piano last night. So it was uh, their first student recital, and like all, all three, like all three played just wonderfully. And there are uh, there are recordings on Facebook. So if you want to check it out on Facebook, you can check it out on Facebook. You'll hear them. Even Victor was up there playing. So it was pretty cool. It was really nice. So it's nice to see that other things, our sanctuary is used for other things as well. And we are so truly thankful for uh, Harmony Arts being a part of our, our uh, church here. And as always, I remind you to send in your joys or concerns to us through email, through text, or through phone, and we'll be sure to include them in our next service. So now let us pray. O oh, healing presence, whose claim on us is strong enough to change our direction, look with favor on this gathered congregation, that none may go astray, but all may respond with joy to your promises and go out and share your good news with the hungry and the needy and the oppressed. As today, we ask mindfully that you watch over and comfort our friends in Christ, such as our homebound, those in life care centers, those on our prayer list, as well as those named here today. And we celebrate with you the saints of this church that serve your people with love. Now in a moment of silence, hear those prayers too private to speak out loud. Lord, Hear our prayers. May we keep these special people in our minds and in our hearts and especially in our prayers as we go through this next week. And let us pray the prayer that Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. God continues to lift up the lowly and to topple the powerful from their thrones. God judges us not by worldly standards of greatness, but according to the genuineness of our compassion and the extent of our faithfulness. Our offerings are one measure of our priorities. So let us consider going to the church's website at www.trinityreformeducc.org or send a text with the amount you want to donate to 570-701-8479, 570-701-8479, and present your offerings to God online or by sending in your church envelopes as best you are able. Those who are here in person can drop their offering in the basket at the rear of the sanctuary. Um.
Please join me in the blessing and commission found on the walls and on your screens. God has been present with us here today. God also sends us out into the world. The world we are about to enter is God's world. We can count on God to be with us every day. God's judgment is sure, but so is God's love. God lifts us, lifts up the lowly and offers them strength. Our eyes and ears have been opened to God's truth. We have good news for all who need to hear it. Be patient with others and do not grumble. Be patient with yourselves as you seek the holy way. Like the prophets, we seek speak in God's name. Like the lowly servants, we are eager to help others. Amen. I promised a long time ago to do these congregational conversations at least once a year. And of course, during the pandemic, we didn't worry able to do them. So this is the one for this year. So you can expect one for next year too. So where does Trinity Reformed UCC go from here? What possibilities exist that we as a church, the body of Christ, could address here in our community? Will we act or will we sit on the sidelines and let others do the work? It is when we no longer have a mission that the time will come for us to close up shop. There are infinite possibilities for this congregation to take on as a mission project so that we are truly the body of Christ, sharing God's love throughout our community and the world. Let us just do it. Amen. Let us conclude our service with a closing hymn, Lead On, O King Eternal, number 632 in the hymnal, on the walls and on your screens. Go in peace directly to Jubilee Hall for fellowship time. <laughs> <laughs>